Lieber Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap that gives you a wonderful new kind of suds, presents... Our friend, Swan, with my friend, Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. My name is Jane Stacy, and I live with Irma Peterson. You know, they say that we begin to acquire knowledge from the moment we first see the light of day. And I know it's true because Irma's always going around singing, I am waiting for the sunrise. <laughs> now, don't jump at conclusions because I love Irma Peterson, but it's so hard to make her understand things. For instance, the other night we were discussing names. And I mentioned that Johnson means son of John and Michelson means son of Michael. And Irma Peterson said, Gee, then I must be Irma, son of Peter. <laughs> well, those things you just don't fight Especially this lovely Sunday morning When the thoughts of the wonderful time that I had last night Are still fresh in my memory Irma Yes, Jane I'm so sorry you weren't with us last night Richard took me to the starlight roof of the Waldorf and We rumbled all evening It was just heavenly I had a date with Al Yeah, I know What did you do? Well, Al walked me down Broadway and let me read the news bulletins on the Times building. <laughs> Naturally. What else? And then you know the bus that goes to Chinatown? Yes. Al showed me the bus. <laughs> ah, it's a reckless plunger if ever I saw one. What else did you do? Well, then we ran out of money. So we went to the park. <laughs> we went to the park and sat on the bench. I see. You know, the poor have fun, too. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Irma, but honey, how can you let that no-good loafer see you Saturday after Saturday without ever spending a nickel on you? What can I do? Well, at least if you could get him to dance, you and Al could go out with Richard and me. I'd love a double day. But Jane, Al dances. Irma, I have seen Al dance with you. <laughs> And when he swings his legs, it can only be described as the try for the extra point after a touchdown. <laughs> On a slippery field with a wet ball. Well, it's the only step he knows. He said he learned it running between railroad ties. Well, I don't care what he says, Irma. It's up to you to make Al toe the mark. What do you mean? Well, today, any half-civilized man can dance the rumba. You know how. Why don't you teach him? Well, Jane, I'd love to make him half-civilized, but he's against it. <laughs> well, then I have nothing more to say, and you deserve everything you get. Hello? Hello, Jane. This is Richard. Oh, how's my favorite boss today? Oh, swell, dear. Say, Jane, keep tomorrow night free. Yeah? I'm expecting Mr. and Mrs. Delbert Watkins of Chicago. He's an important client, and I want you to help me entertain them. You know, dinner, dancing. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Well, it would be nice if we had another couple along so it wouldn't look so much like business. Do you know anyone we might invite? Well, there's Irma and... Oh, you said dancing. Yes, I see what you mean. I remember Al's dancing. Thought he was trying to impersonate a wounded grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, why don't you call back later, Richard? I'll see what I can do. Okay. Bye, Richard. Bye. There, now, you see, Irma, Richard would love to have you and Al along tomorrow night. Honey, now, this is your chance. Al's coming here. Why don't you spend the afternoon teaching him a simple rumba step? Oh, it's no use. Al would get tired, and second thing you know, we'll be back on the sofa where he wanted to be in the first place. <laughs> oh, Irma, I can't understand you. You like to dance, don't you? Oh, certainly. Why, I once won a cup in Minnesota dancing the rumba with Harvey Connors. Well, I only wish he was here now. Oh, he is. You mean in New York? Yes, and he's very successful. He lives at the YMCA. <laughs> well, honey, now that's enough for me. You're going to phone him. Oh, no, Jane, please. I couldn't go out with another fellow. That would be going behind Al's back, and then I couldn't face him. Oh. <laughs> Don't be such a martyr, Irma. You're young, sweetie, and you're pretty. Be fair to yourself. Now, how long have you known Al? Five years. And what has he spent on you in that time? Five years. 
<laughs> and you're worried about him. You know, it just burns me up. I never heard of a man so against dancing. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kravatkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little bottle openers. One straight and one screwy. <laughs> Why, Professor? Excuse me, a little joke I picked up in the hardware store. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, you can help me prove a point with Irma. I maintain that every man dances. Do you? By me, it's a must. You see, Irma? Well, where do you dance, Professor? In my room. Heaters broke, fireplace don't work, got to dance to keep warm. <laughs> Why, what's the argument? Oh, there's no argument. I'll be back, honey. Oh, Jean, you're not going to call Harvey Connors. Well, if Al won't take you dancing, Harvey might. Now, I'm not going to let you sit home. Goodbye, honey. Irma, what's the matter? Oh, Professor, if you were a girl and your boyfriend couldn't dance and you had a chance to go out, would you take it like a man if you were a girl? <laughs> I'd like to give you a straightforward answer if you could only straighten out the question. Well, uh, Jane's going to invite my old boyfriend, Harvey, to take me dancing, and, well, that would be two-timing Al. I love Al. What shall I do? Uh-huh. Well, Irma, there is an old saying. Well, what is it? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. But how does that apply to me? It doesn't. This is a saying for bird lovers. <laughs> but you ask a foolish question, you get a foolish answer. Oh, Professor, I don't know what to do. If I break up with Al, he'll simply go out of his mind. Then it will really be a shame. Two people so compatible should be apart. <laughs> oh, see who it is, Professor. If it's Al, uh, uh, and I say, come in, Harvey, Harvey won't come in. We take no chances. Welcome, stranger. <laughs> stranger? It's me, Al. Hello, Professor. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Why do you look so tired? Can't sleep. That factory across the street is driving me crazy. Well, why don't you go to bed early? I do, chicken, but that noon whistle wakes me up every morning. <laughs> Speaking of factories, I think I'll go back to my room and punch in. Punch in? Yeah, the door is stuck. <laughs> well, as they say in English, pip pip. What a language. <laughs> glad of this chance to be alone with you because I want to talk to you. Sure, chicken. What about? Well, if I said it was for my sake, would, would you learn the rumba? The rumba? Baby, that's for sissies. The Park Avenue crowd go for it because they got nothing else to do. And having nothing else to do, they get nervous and start to shake. First thing you know, they meet another of their kind who is also shaken. Put them together, you got a rumba. <laughs> You're so selfish. All you want to do is sit here on the sofa when we could be dancing. Selfish? Chicken, what I'm doing is for the good of my fellow man. Let me ask you, how many guys in an orchestra? I don't know. About 15, I guess. You know how many guys are employed in a sofa factory? 10,000. <laughs> Should I put 10,000 guys out of a job just to keep 15 working? <laughs> oh, well, but, but we'd have so much fun together. Chicken, what's in back of all this? Well, if you would let me teach you the rumba this afternoon, we could go out with Jane and Richard and, and the Watkins tomorrow night. Sorry, Irma, not interested. No rumba for me. I'm not one of them guys who has to keep bouncing up and down because he ain't got the nerve to look a dame in the eye. <laughs> All right, Al, but don't blame me for what might happen. What are you talking about? Well, Al, you're not the only pebble in the sea, and there are plenty of fish on the beach. <laughs> Now, look, chicken, just because I won't rumba, don't threaten me. You're a sweet kid, but take it from me, guys are very scarce nowadays. Before you find another guy, it might be a long, long time. Who is it? It's me, Harvey Connors. My, how time flies. <laughs> Who's that, chicken? Oh, Al, uh, it's not my fault. You see, Jane said that Don't blame I... Jane. I'll find out for myself. Come here. Hello, Irma. Gosh, it's been a long time. Yes, Harvey. Uh, I, I want you to meet Al. Uh, Al, this is Harvey. Hello, Al. It's nice to know you. Hmm. Gee, Harvey, uh, uh, <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. Neither of you, except uh, you're much prettier. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Harvey, 
Harvey, <coughs> did you ever hear from any of the folks back home? Just one. Remember Tommy Clark? Tommy Clark? Oh, certainly. He was the first fellow I ever kissed. Gee, how he could kiss. Yeah, nice guy. He's a glass blower now. <laughs> not intruding, bud. Why don't you get lost? Lost? Well, Irma's roommate, Miss Stacy, said something about Irma wanting to go to a dance tomorrow night. That's why I dropped around. Well, kid, change of plans. Sorry you got to rush along, but keep in touch. If anything turns up, we'll call you. Don't bother to write. Oh, wait a minute, Al. Harvey's an old friend. We won a rumba contest together in Minnesota, didn't we, Harvey? Yes, it's been a long time since I danced with you. Shall we dust off the old insteps and give it a whirl? Hold up there. What's wrong, Al? No girlfriend of mine is going to dance with no fast-talking city slicker. Now, just a oh, minute Oh, please, there. Al, now don't make a scene. Hi, everybody. Hey, what's going on? Oh, Jane, isn't it terrible? They're fighting over me. <laughs> <laughs> They're fighting? Who? Oh, oh, this must be hard. Well, huh? How do you do? Oh. Time to get out, Jane. Now, wait a minute, Al. Irma is entitled to some pleasure, and if you don't give it to her, she'll get it elsewhere. Oh, yeah? Well, not with this guy. And how are you going to prevent it? Well, I'll... I'll... Say it, Al. I'll... Learn the rumba. <laughs> oh, Al, thanks. I'm, I'm sorry, Harvey, but thanks for volunteering. Oh, perfectly all right, Irma. To tell you the truth, I'm glad it turned out this way. You see, this is the same suit I wore when we won the rumba contest, and it's a little tight on me. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Harvey. Well, Al, I'm glad to see that you're such a good sport. Yeah, well, don't rub it in. I'm going to let Irma teach me today, and I'll learn to rumba so good, she'll think she's dancing with Arthur Murray. Don't be silly, Al. If I wouldn't go out dancing with Harvey, I'm certainly not going to dance with someone else. <laughs> And now Susie Swan sings to us. Listen. My advice says Susie, you like this brand new kind of lather, so be choosy. Swan gives you beauty lather, rich as cream. Your skin stays soft as any dream, and fresh as dew. I Swan, do you? Says Susie. Uh, you're right, Susie Swan. And you women will agree that it pays to be choosy about the soap you use for your baths. Yes, it pays to use swan soap. You see, white floating swan gives you a wonderful new kind of beauty lather to make every bath tops in enjoyment. Sure, you'll enjoy smoothing that rich, creamy swan lather on your skin. It feels so soft, so gentle. And you'll enjoy the way swan's new kind of beauty lather cleanses your skin. Gently, yet so thoroughly, your skin fairly glows with cleanliness. And ladies, here's a special note. You'll really enjoy the new after-bath feeling you have with Swan. Because Swan rinses away so completely, your skin is left smooth and fresh, not all drawn and over-soaked. So, how about enjoying a Swan bath next time? You'll love Swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather. <laughs> set for Al's first rumba lesson. The carpet's been rolled up, the furniture's been pushed back, and the phonograph is poised for the opening gong. In this corner, Irma Peterson, 115 pounds and ready for action. In that corner, Al, 165 pounds and ready to jump out of the window. <laughs> Frankly, I've never seen Irma so happy. I just can't get over the radiant look on her face. Her expression is that of a mother who is about to see her child take his first step. I have a feeling that Al doesn't want to come to Mama Irma? Yes, Jane? Change the needle in the phone graph, it's all ready Thanks Are you ready, Al? Well, look, chicken, I know I promised But why should I learn the rumba when I got a whole mess of Charleston steps I've never even used yet? <laughs> oh, come on, Al, be a good sport I'm anxious to see how you do Because I want to phone Richard if you're joining us Come oh, on We'll show you, come on, Al I feel like I'm going to the dentist now, Al, first I want you to get to know the rhythm of the rumba music when you hear it. Uh, start the music, Jane. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the wrong record. You want me to dance or salute? Oh. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, gee. I'm sorry, Al. Here it is. It's a wonderful rumba, Siboney. Oh, hold it just a minute, Jane. Uh, I want to show Al the correct position for the rumba. Now, Al, take my hand. Oh, no, not so close. Stand back. That's it. Chicken, if we're going to stand this far apart, there's no point in dancing with you. <laughs> I can just call you up on the phone. <laughs> Well, that's correct. Well, it might be correct, but it ain't fun. Now, come on, kids. Here goes the music. All right, now, I'll lead you, Al. Ready? One, two, three, step. One, two, three, step. No, no, Al. What's wrong? Well, when you dance a rumba, you're not supposed to move the head, the shoulders, or hips. Just the feet and the knees. Understand? Okay, but do you mind if the rest of me comes along just for the ride? <laughs> Ahead, Al. Now, now, come on, try it again, Al. One, two, three, step. One, two, three, step. No, no, Al, honey. What, what didn't I do now? Well, when you do the rumba, you don't jump around. You stay in one place. Can't dance that way, chicken. Got to keep moving. Why? <laughs> the joints I go to, my pockets will be picked in the first aid bar. <laughs> Oh, Chicken, I want to make you happy, but I just wasn't cut out for this sissy stuff. Oh, don't say that, Al. Uh, you're graceful. Oh, you think so? <laughs> oh, certainly. And don't forget, you haven't got a career yet. Uh, you could become a great dancer. Well, never thought of it that way. Sure, maybe we could become a team. Uh, call ourselves Al and Irma, those dancing fools. <laughs> kind of corny, chicken But descriptive <laughs> Or uh, maybe Alan Irma A boy and a girl Four legs, that's all Oh, my <laughs> Al, are you going to dance? Try it once more Let's go One, two, three, step One, two, three, step Oh, no, no, Al What do I get a ticket for now? Well, you keep shaking your head. Pretend there's a, a, a plate of spaghetti on your head and you don't want to spill it. Keep your head erect. Gotcha. Let's go. One, two, three, step. One, two, three, step. Oh, Al, what are you doing? Sorry, chicken. Can't concentrate. Getting hungry. <laughs> keep thinking of that spaghetti on my head. What's a use? You and Richard better go out with the Watkins alone. I'm in love with the wallflower. Oh, don't say that, chicken. I tried. It's just one of them things. Some guys is born for the rumba. Some guys is born for the sofa. <laughs> now, listen, Al. You promised, Irma. You made her send Harvey home, and you're going to learn if you stay here all afternoon. Uh, uh, let me try leading you I'm game Start the music, will you, honey? And listen, Al, I'm not Jolson And you're not Sonny Boy So stay off my knees <laughs> We'll make a definite effort Thank you One, two, three, step One, two, three, murder! <laughs> Sorry, Jane Didn't mean to kick your ankle No? What were you aiming at? <laughs> All right Let's try it again one, two, three, step. One, two, three, step. One, two, three... Mother. Yeah, I thought I did pretty good there. Yes, you did. At mountain climbing. <laughs> oh, we better quit. No, you don't, Al. Between Irma and me, you're going to learn this rumba if it kills you. Now, come on. One, two, three, step. Come one, on. One, two, three, Do step. It. One, two, one, two right. three, come step. Come on, Come on. One, two, three, step. <laughs> Well, girls, how'd I do? Well, Irma, say something. Jane, speak. Well, the two of you are just going to lie on the floor like that. I'll sit down. Jane, do you want some water? No. See if you can get plasma. <laughs> oh, now, cut the kidding, Jane. I wasn't that bad. No, well, let me tell you. Come I in. Had... Hello, Irma. How are you, Jane? Oh, hello, Richard. I was just going to call you. Say, what happened to this room? Looks like the super chief's been through here. <laughs> no, we were teaching Al the rumba. We're waiting for our battle stars. <laughs> Look, Jane, I don't know what to do about tomorrow night. Watkins just wired, and he and his wife would like to see the floor show at Bowery Sam's, and I can't get a reservation. Bowery Sam? 
Shouldn't be hard to fix. Well, Al, if there's any way in the world you can swing it, I'd be most appreciative. Now, Watkins' wife is a little eccentric, but he's a big client, and you know what that means. See what I can do. Only one man who can help us. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Huh? Why am I out of breath? I was learning the rumba. Yeah, it's a dance. You know, like Bellows and Yolanda? Huh? No, they was never with Notre Dame. <laughs> Joe would like to get reservations for a few friends at Bowery Sam's. What's the dope? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Now, hold it, Joe. No use, folks. What's wrong? The only way I can get you in is if you're my guests. Well, Al, that's wonderful. Oh, no, Chicken. Bowery Sam's a classy place. No use me going. Jane would be embarrassed. I can't rumba. Who says you can? You did. Oh, Al, I was just kidding you. Oh, yeah? How about when I kicked you in the ankles? Uh, well, that's the latest step, Al. Uh, they're doing that all over uh, Bolivia. <laughs> Is that right, Richard? Yes, yes, and uh, parts of the Argentine. I saw it way over in Jersey. <laughs> You're not kidding me. Of course not, Al. Well, I knew I had talent, but I didn't think it worked so fast. Okay, I'll fix it up right now. Uh, hello, Joe. Al, coming over with party of six tomorrow night. Huh? No, you don't have to worry. Somebody in the crowd will pay. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Joe. Well, it's all set. Now, look, Richard, I want this understood. If I go along, I want to pay my own way. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of it. Okay. <laughs> Come on, Irma, sit with me down the corner while I get my shoes shined. Want to look good tomorrow night. But, Al, why don't you wait until tomorrow night to have them shined? Got the dime in the shoes now. Don't know what the future will bring. <laughs> All right, goodbye, Jane and Richard. Bye. Bye, kids. Jane, do you think we were right in kidding Al into believing he could do the rumba? You know, that Bolivian step? Oh, it can't do any harm, dear. And what's most important, it'll give Irma a chance to have a good time. She's been home so much. All right, just as long as it can't do any harm. <laughs> We finally got to Bowery Sam's, but not before I almost had a nervous breakdown. Irma couldn't decide what dress to wear, and she finally chose an evening gown with a neckline so low, I'm sure the dressmaker had to stand in a hole to sew it. <laughs> Al? Well, Al looked rather natty in a rented tuxedo. Took Richard and me quite a time to convince him that he could look just as sporty without wearing black and white shoes. <laughs> Of course, I told Al and Irma to be on their very best behavior because we don't want to do anything that would embarrass Richard and his guests, the Watkins. Well, anyway, Mr. Watkins is seated at my right. We're all at a ringside table. Uh, Mr. Watkins. Yes, Miss Stacy. I, uh, I see you like champagne. Indeed. How about you, Miss Peterson? Gets up my nose and tickles me. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Watkins is very charming, Dell. Well, thank you, Richard. Before she comes back from the powder room, I'd like to tell you... That she's just come out of the hospital. Oh, dear, how unfortunate. Well, between us, I think it's purely imaginary. Helen is sure that she has a stomach ailment. If I could only get her mind off it, I might start to enjoy life. Here she comes. Well, here I am again. Say, that's a rumba. You get a rum, Mrs. Watkins? Ow! Uh, oh. Well, I, I haven't danced in quite a while. You don't do too many fancy steps. No, I do the Bolivian rumba. <laughs> Come on, Mrs. Watkins. Oh, no. Oh, Jane, isn't it wonderful? Uh, this will give Al confidence. This will really give her a reason to go to the hospital. <laughs> oh, Richard, what'll we do? I warned you. Oh, don't worry, Jane. Look at Mr. Watkins. He's not nervous. No? Then why is he putting ketchup in his champagne? <laughs> Irma, I can't look. I, I just can't look. What is Al doing now? I think it's a fancy step. No, he tripped her. <laughs> is she hurt? I don't know. She's not up yet. <laughs> oh, look. Now he's lifting her and spinning her. <laughs> Jane, is that also done in Bolivia? Only in the unexplored part. <laughs> Richard, I'm so sorry, honestly. Oh, Jane, they're coming off the floor. Is she still walking? Yes. On her hands or her feet? Well, here we are back. 
Darling, you're all right? Oh, I've never felt better. This sweet fool kept kicking me in the ankle so much I forgot all about my stomach. <laughs> well, that sounds like my old Helen. Here, honey, I know you haven't had a drink of champagne in six months, but how about a drink? Certainly, dear. Oh, don't bother pouring it. Just hand me the bottle. <laughs> Girl. And Richard, about that 50,000 shares of United, double the order. Thanks, Dell. Oh, Al. Al, my ballerina. <laughs> that was nothing. Wait till I find out what they're doing in Peru. the bathtub half full of water and several bars of swan soap floating in it while Irma was busy piling rocks in one end of the tub. She had me for a minute. Then finally I asked for an explanation and Irma said, I want the swans to have a place to dry off when they're through swimming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Irma. She just won't make sense about swan except when she insists that swan is the perfect soap for bathing. And that's good sense in anybody's language. Because white floating swan soap gives you a wonderful new kind of beauty lather to make your bath a real beauty bath. Sure, for one thing, swan's new kind of lather is so mild, so gentle, it's kind to even the most delicate skin. And the way this new kind of beauty lather feels against your skin, so rich, so soft, such a relaxing bath. Yes, you'll really enjoy a bath with swan, ladies. And you'll love the way your skin feels after a swan bath, too. Because swan rinses away so completely, there's none of that tight, over-soaked feeling. Instead, your skin is left fresh and radiant. So for a real beauty bath, try swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather next time, won't you? Olivia, everything turned out just wonderfully. But our apartment is no longer the same. Every moment that Al and Irma are together, the phonograph is going and the joint is jumping. In fact, yesterday I said, Irma, you know, you and Al are fanatics about this rumba. Why, why don't the two of you ever sit on the sofa? And Irma said, Oh, Al says that's for kids. <laughs> we have time for that when we grow up. <laughs> and you know, the one person who will still be a kid at 90 will be my friend, Irma. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, tune in an hour earlier over most of these same stations for the Lux Radio Theater. And then stay tuned to listen to... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Hans Conried was Professor Kropotkin. Marie Wilson can soon be seen in the Eagle Lion release, Linda B. Good. Ladies, listen. The shortage of fats and oils is still very serious, and it's worldwide. So please, keep on saving every single drop of used kitchen fat. Your butcher will pay you for every pound. Frank Bingman speaking. Spy with Cake Improver. Spy with Cake Improver. Spry means higher, richer, lighter, finer textured cake. Spry means easy, sure success with every cake you bake. Spry with Cake Improver. Spry with Cake Improver. It's S-P-R-Y, Spry, and it's one bowl method for the most delicious cakes ever. For no other type shortening has Spry's marvelous Cake Improver. Try Spry. Tune in again to my friend Irma next Monday evening at this same time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.